Hello and thank you for joining me for your daily reading. So today we're taking a look at doing a curiosity read and we're going to find out what, if anything, is currently being hidden from you. As always, please do keep in mind these reads are general, okay? Don't try and force the messages to fit with your situation. It's either going to be your reading this time or it's not going to be your reading this time, okay? So you have to use your own discernment and be smart, all right? Okay, so with that being said, let's get into this. Right, so what is our collective's energy at this point in time, please? What is our collective's energy? Okay, switching out to the overhead camera so you can see. Okay, the Two of Swords, the Wheel of Fortune and the Nine of Coins. Your overall energy is actually really, really good, okay? Um, it's showing me that the vast majority of you, not all, but the vast majority of you, uh, coming from a place now of being more sort of self-assured, more empowered, right? This Two of Swords is a bit different from the traditional Two of Swords, okay? This is why I use lots of different tarot and whatever deck wants to come out, I'm going to let that one come out on that day, right? Now, in traditional, to, in traditional tarot, the Two of Swords is more repressive, right? By the way that the individual in the card is poised, she's far more repressed, right? With the swords crossed across her chest, she still has the blindfold on, right? This one's still got the blindfold on. I don't know if you can see it properly, but her poise is a lot different from the traditional two of swords okay this one's far more self-assured this one is you basically going yeah do you know what i know exactly what it is that i need to do i am going to get this done i appreciate it's not going to be easy but i'm going to give it my best shot okay that's the message that i get with this particular two of swords the difficult part has been put behind you simply because her arms are no longer crossed across her chest Okay, if they were crossed across her chest, then you would still be in that mode of trying to make this difficult decision of trying to basically keep everyone in the situation happy, right? That decision's now been made because it's more like a victory dance, a victory pose almost, okay? Even though you're still uncertain with that blindfold on how it's actually going to play out, how things are going to work out, what the end result's going to look like, you're still going to go for it anyway, okay? Now, with that grey sky in the background, this is... Um, it, it is a little bit of negativity, but it's not an overwhelming amount of negativity, okay? That's the kind of negativity when we're about to do something that is risky and we're like, okay... I don't know how this is going to play out, but I'm, I'm going to go for it anyway, right? So you've already done the necessary risk assessment on something. Now you're ready to take that action. But th th there is this little bit of um, reassurance almost that, that you're looking for um, to indicate that you're doing the right thing, that you're about to do the right thing. And the Wheel of Fortune being right next to it tells you guys, yeah, Absolutely, friggin -lutely. you are about to do the right thing. So go with it, okay? Um, it's just a reminder that basically any negative thoughts that you have surrounding this thing to try and get back on top of it again before it ends up, you know, w with a problem, before it ends up with you spiraling, basically, and then going back on said decision that you've already made okay um i do i i love this deck it doesn't want to come out very often which is fair enough uh but today though it was it was very loud it really wanted to come out so with the wheel of fortune being here you're definitely on the right path for those who were still looking for that little bit of reassurance um 
then the universe is saying yes, basically, okay? The Wheel of Fortune is a yes card. It's a green light from the universe, from your spirit guides, from your higher self, okay? And you can see as well all of the snowy mountains in the background of this card. Um, as you put in the struggles and the difficulties behind you. Now, those could have been external or they could have been internal, right? Likely a combination of both. Okay, because obviously we take in from our environment, we do, we absolutely do personalize what is going on within our environment. Okay, we, we do take that inwards. Um, and again, whatever's going on with us internally, we can project that outwards externally into our environment. Okay. Um, as above, so below, as within, so without, right? That's basically what that turn of phrase means. Um, so you can be rest assured that you're putting certain issues, problems, uh, restrictions behind you, okay? You're moving onwards and upwards, basically, is the message here, which is absolutely beautiful. And then it's reinforced even further with this nine of coins, Okay, that's someone who's self-assured, someone who is feeling a lot more stable and secure uh, within themselves than they have done in recent times. Okay, now, interestingly, this nine of coins, again, is quite different and is, is very subtle. The, the difference is subtle, uh, but once you see it, you cannot unsee it. So she's actually balanced on one leg. In fact, it looks like she's got the lower half of her leg actually missing. I don't know if that's deliberate or if that was just uh, the way that these cards were designed. You know, the way the way that the, the shades were all sort of blended in. Who's to know, right? But there is definitely a message there. And this is showing that you had something that worked against you in a lot of ways. You perhaps didn't have the same types of opportunities as everyone else had, yet you still made it work for you. Because the Nine of Coins is an individual who is successful. Okay? Um, they get themselves through the rough times. And they're very, very good at it, right? Nine of Coins is someone who is self-made. And that's what I was saying with the, the subtle difference in that card. It, it, it is subtle, but once you see it, it's got a huge, huge impact. Like the message behind it, okay? So, with that being said, even though you may not have had the same kind of opportunities that most people, because most people have got two, two legs and two feet, right? Not everyone, but most people do. It's a metaphor, okay? Most people get support in, in whatever area of your life this is that is the most, that, that's taken up most of your focus right now right? And the fact that I'm speaking to someone here who didn't get the support that most people would otherwise get, and you still made it, you still managed. That is quite a lot for you to be proud of. A lot. Okay. Never ever underestimate the nine of coins or the nine of pentacles or anyone who is in that kind of energy, right? This is someone who is incredibly self-sufficient in spite of whatever it is that life has thrown or will continue to throw at them. This is someone who doesn't sit down in the corner and give up. Okay, this is someone who keeps going. This is an individual who is focused on enjoying life and making the most of life in spite of any difficulties or disadvantages. 
you've made something work for you that for other people it would have been a much bigger disadvantage and others would have given up where you continued you refused to give up even though you were at some kind of massive massive disadvantage and that is a lot to be proud of so i mean if anybody's gonna if anyone's gonna misjudge you i do see that backfiring because anyone who comes from this sort of energy from these kinds of experiences in life and have still managed has still survived well not just survived but thrived because nine of coins is a th is thriving it means that basically you're unfuckwithable okay so what are the outside influences that are currently affecting you guys at this time what's going on for our collective can you have a look at outside influences please page of cups the two of cups and the seven of cups someone outside of you is absolutely full of emotions three cups cards here back to back they could be a water sign but they don't have to be okay a pisces cancer a scorpio i mean they could be any sign right this is literally someone contemplating pondering again i don't know if you can see this very well because the cards the the colors that they use are very very light right there, there's a box with a cup and then this individual sort of looking down at this cup with their hands almost doing that with the cup but not actually touching it right again very powerful metaphor for what's going on with another person's emotions towards you you're out of reach to this person and it's affecting them quite a lot right with that box i'm getting the message of this because that cup is outside of the box i i don't like i don't like using the turner phrase and i hate other people using the turner phrase think outside the box it i i don't know why it just gets my back up um <laughs> I think it's because I, I imagine these CEOs using it. Um, but that's going off on a tangent. With that message of them being outside of the box, I'm getting the message that they are trying to think of ways on how they can get closer to you because they're on the outskirts. Does that make sense? So this is the energy of an individual that you do not socialize with frequently. You don't speak to them frequently. Um, I, I feel that you probably don't even know this individual very well on a personal level. Or there's just been a lot of time that has passed since you last interacted. Right? with this individual so again take it as it resonates now you've got the two of cups right next to that one which is a partnership it's two people working together towards the same goals in life it can absolutely be romantic and i am getting the energy of this individual having romantic in romantic inclinations towards you And I feel that you might not even be aware of it. Because you've got the Seven of Cups right there as well. Okay. Which is the card of anything that is fantasy. It is the card of daydreaming, confusion, 
lots of choices um it's scattered energy because it's someone who doesn't quite know what to do right but this one this one it feels like that there's a purpose behind it rather than having all of the cups being filled filled with something different and someone standing there trying to choose again this seven of cups has got a different energy to it than the traditional seven of cups okay this one is more to do with how this individual here doesn't know what to do with their feelings that they feel strongly and deeply towards you. They don't know where to put their emotions. They, they don't know what to do with them. They don't know as to whether or not they should express their love towards you. Okay? Because again, see with that two of cups, even though it's a beautiful energy, it's in the dark night sky. Which indicates some kind of fear and secrecy. This individual is afraid, afraid that you could reject them. But I feel that this is more to do with they're afraid of their feelings towards you because they've never felt this way towards anyone before. There is something very different about you which we've already ascertained with that nine of coins right there this is the energy of an individual who is afraid that because of your independence you might not even notice them all right so, so they've got something going on where your independence and your internal strength that absolutely does shine out externally and everyone can see how strong and independent you are this individual is massively attracted to that but they're also equally afraid of the very thing that they're attracted to you about does that make sense um right so <laughs> let's move on what else can you tell us for our collective, please? What is it that's being hidden? What is it that's being hidden from our collective at this point in time, please? Okay, but it's being hidden. <laughs> Strength, the world, and the three of swords. Okay. Um... And I have realized that this is yet another deck that missed out on my sticker fest where I had to put stickers over the boobs on all the cards. This is one of the decks that didn't get that treatment. So whatever, we're halfway through the read. I just got to leave it. Uh, YouTube's AI is just going to have to get over itself. Right, it's being hidden. This individual, they are trying to maintain this external appearance of not being bothered, of not being phased, okay? They're trying to, I feel, maintain this external appearance of being in control and it again the the symbology in this deck is absolutely incredible it's really really well made what was the deck called again the fountain tarot this lion actually has its face painted i don't know if you can see that and that lion's face looks more like a man than it does a lion. So there's a really strong masculine energy that, that's coming through here. And with the face paint, that can either be camouflage or it can be a symbol of someone trying to build up the strength and courage to do 
something that's really, really difficult. Okay. It can also be very tribal. It's possible that this individual is a member of your soul tribe. I'm feeling that this is more to do with how this individual is trying to regulate themselves. And that's why it's come out in the section of what it is that's being hidden from you. The world. A half-naked individual sitting on what looks like a globe, but it's a really odd-looking globe. Again, really different from traditional tarot. It's more like a glass dome with a prism, a prism on the inside. I repeated that word because it probably sounded like prison rather than prism. This individual is wanting to show you different aspects of who they are as an individual. And they're hoping that they're going to be interesting to you. I need to clarify this world energy because it's come out with the three of swords right next to it. This is someone who is hiding their pain. What's this world that's being hidden from our collective, please? <clears throat> What's this world? Thank you. Okay, Five of Swords, Page of Cups, and the Ten of Cups. See, that Five of Swords, in certain contexts, it can be about bad behaviour. It can be very sort of overpowering and bu bullish, you know, like a bully. It can also indicate an empty victory. If somebody was competing, if they were competing with you, and this one came out, it would indicate that you come out on top, but it still wouldn't make you feel good, because it's the Five of Swords. Now, the context that this has come out in it's the Page of Cups, Ten of Cups, and the world. It's to clarify the world. So I'm feeling that what's actually going on here is this individual has possibly witnessed you going through something here and they felt powerless to help you out for whatever reason. They've seen that you've gotten yourself out of a bad or difficult situation here without their help. And they're feeling bad for that because they weren't able to step in and help you out. Now, I don't know why they weren't able to step in and help you out. That's going to have to be a conversation between you two. There's potentially an apology here from this person and the explanation as to why they felt that they couldn't step in and help you out when you, when you needed it the most. It's something that you've gone through here more recently. And they, for whatever reason, felt like it wasn't their place or that they weren't able to do anything. Okay. And then your Ten of Cups, that's one of your Apex cards. It's completion, contentment, feeling blessed. What's this Three of Swords, please? 
in the hidden energy was the three assaults. Wheel of Fortune, the Star, and Judgment. Three major arcana for the three assaults. Three to the three. Hmm. Threes carry an energy of co-creating with the universe, but also can mean that sometimes things are just the way that they are because of that sort of universe power behind it, you know? Wheel of Fortune, the Star and Judgment. That's healing. That's a wish fulfillment. This individual is hiding the fact, for whatever reason, that they've had some kind of an awakening here. They've had some profound realization. It feels like they're trying to not get you involved with something that is going to be hurtful. If this is someone who betrayed you somehow in the past collective, then this individual is definitely regretting that. And they're wishing that they could take it back. They're wishing that they could have a do-over and start again. So again, you're going to have to take it as it resonates. This is someone who is currently introspecting as well. Definitely. Because they've realized that they've got a lot of work to do on themselves in order to get to the correct level that they're needing to be at so that they can match you, so that they can match your energy. Okay. Hmm. Can we have the possible outcome here, please, for our collective? Whoa. Okay. Ten of Swords. Speaking of betrayal. This is someone who, in a lot of ways, betrayed themselves by not taking action. See how these cards are now flying out? The three of coins in the reversed position. Hmm. Interesting. It's like a giant bubble on his shoulders. And then again, another subtle detail. You've got a pair of hands here and a pair of hands there. And it looks like they're, they're helping this person keep that bubble up. It's like it, it's being propped up. It came out in the reverse. So whoever was propping up or perpetuating the troubles that you were going through, it's coming crashing down to the ground. That's why it's with the Ten of Swords. So was this individual somehow directly involved with the difficulties and the troubles that you were going through? Did they otherwise contribute to it? Or did they sit back and watch and do nothing? This is, thank you, Five of Swords again, and the Eight of Cups. Hmm. See with this one. Actually using the swords to get this prop up. Most likely outcome, you're using whatever it was that was thrown at you to your own advantage. That's this five of swords. And the Eight of Cups. A 
recognizing that something's over. Something's not worth your investment. It's not worth your thought, your emotion. The most likely outcome is whoever the individuals are or were that were adding to your problems rather than helping you out. They are going to watch you grow. They're going to watch you advance in ways that they never thought was going to be possible. Six of Cups at the bottom of the deck. A memory. It's a memory. A bubble of a memory. That's their Six of Cups. Hmm. And the Six of Swords under there. Yeah. So this is likely a past individual. This is all about moving on from painful memories. What's this Five of Swords with the Eight of Cups, please? King of Swords and the Magician. Hmm. Both of these energies are incredibly determined. It feels to me, Collective, that the most likely outcome is this individual is going to try and put things right with you. I don't know how. What's this King of Swords? Does this individual have a plan? This is King of Swords. Off center. Okay. Knight of Coins, Hide of Fent, Queen of Wands, and the Two of Wands off center. That's like pushing their luck. Hmm. Really stubborn energies, though. I'm holding them off center because that's how they came out. Really stubborn energies. It feels to me like that's your very rigid boundaries here. It's almost like you're going to be telling this person it's too late. <clears throat> It's too late. You can't undo what's been done. It's too late. Queen of Wands and the Two of Wands. That feels like interference to me. So is someone else interfered? in your business or in their business because th there's no ambition here for this anymore yeah eight of wands at the bottom of the deck it's taking action being decisive and then the Six of Swords. Whoever this individual is, Collective, you're definitely not on the same page as each other. That's for certain. I think this individual's got a lot that's going on in their own personal life here that is effectively interfering with everything else that they're doing or someone else that they're dealing with is interfering with everything that they're doing. You know, setting these unrealistic, unreasonable, hard and fast rules that they absolutely have to adhere to. 
and for whatever reason that's caused some kind of a betrayal between yourself and whoever this person is who's currently sitting there going well I'm on the outside I'm on the outskirts of their life now I don't want to be that's where I found myself And now look at you go. Look look how much you've achieved. Look at what you've done. It's almost like having a group of people throwing a whole bunch of stones at you and then you, you building a house out of the stones that were thrown at you, you know? That's what this energy is. And then you've got something falling down here where the individual who is being propped up by everyone else maybe even encouraged to attack you by everyone else it's all falling apart with that three of coins in the reversed position Hmm. We have a healing message. Grab a collective, please. If this person witnessed you going through all of that and they stood by and did nothing, then they absolutely did contribute to that. Absolutely. Especially if they could have done something and they chose to do nothing. That's still choosing to do something. <clears throat> assassin. First quarter moon, assassin. And that's number nine. It is time to assess your current position. You must make sure your blind spots are revealed and that you're honest with others and yourself. Sometimes the hard decision is the best decision. You should be able to assess and move quickly based on that assessment. Uh, your positive affirmation is, I am enjoying moving and choosing, moving and choosing. You have begun your journey and now it's time to assess where you are and what to do next. You have made a decision. Yeah, that's what I was telling you there. With the, the different pose, you have made a decision. You have worked and walked the path for some time and yet you understand that in every journey, it's wise action to check the map. Sometimes we go along a pathway and we keep going, even if it seems that that way is no longer the right way for us. Sometimes we feel that we've gone too far to turn around. So we settle on a journey and a destination that doesn't really suit us or satisfy us. However, if we had just some courage, we could have reassessed as we went and perhaps ended up somewhere else, somewhere better. Now is the time to look carefully at all aspects of your life, especially the areas in which you have set some intentions or goals. Ask yourself, do I still want these things? Do I still want that same end result? If the answer is no, then ask yourself what you could do to maintain momentum and head towards what you now desire. Although it doesn't seem terribly glamorous, assessment has a high payoff if we bother to do it well. Doing it well means that we really look and look hard at how things are going. All of us have some kind of blind spot, so it's worth exposing this by consulting a trusted friend or finding where negative repeating patterns are and looking for the cause. Shining a light on a blind spot and taking action to shift it is one of life's big, big catalysts for change. Your companion stone or metal is azurite. Mm. This one basically has the message of you're entitled 
to change your mind. You're entitled to look at the facts and evidence and change your decision according to the new facts and the new evidence. Okay. This is vital for anybody who, like me, was taught incorrectly about certain things in life. When you make a decision, you have to stick with it at all costs. And that's bullshit. Because life is constantly changing. Things are constantly developing. New evidence is constantly coming out. You know, it is vital to have an open mind. It is vital to have that freedom to choose your mind, to choose the decision, you know, to change the decisions that, that you've made. It's not about being fickle, but it's about giving you that freedom to go, do you know what? There is now new evidence here that goes against what I believed previously. So, therefore, my opinion on such and such a thing has now changed, right? Now, to put that into context with this reading, I feel that this is someone who is going to try their best to try and present you with some kind of evidence that perhaps they have changed. And this is where you're going to have to be smart and make your own assessment as to whether or not that is true. And the only way that you're going to know if they've really changed or not is through changed behavior. Okay. Assessment. Okay, really, really interesting read. Um, so I'm going to conclude your reading by pulling a card from the Spiritual AF deck. If you're new here, then I do need to give the warning. If you're allergic to swearing or sarcasm, whoa, then you just don't have to listen. Okay, right. <laughs> so the one that fell. Call bullshit on your bullshit. Call bullshit when you see it. You want to get out of a rut, then the first step is to get tired of the bullshit. That's your bullshit, their bullshit, the world's bullshit. Spend today honing your sense of deja vu. Once you can spot the old shit, you can start to stop that old shit. Yeah, call bullshit every time you see it, whether it be your own or others. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that is what I have for you guys today. I genuinely hope that that reading has been helpful to someone. Uh, for personal reading information and how you can book a personal reading with me, if you feel that you need one, the information for that can be found in my description box below. Thank you so very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.